Okay, we have two verses for today, but they're long ones, um, or this is a full page. And so begin by trying to pronounce it. And here's my pronunciation. Andres Adolfoi, exon a pain meta parasias pros humas peri tu patriarchu David. Hoti kai etelutesen kai etafe kai to menema autu esten en hemin akrites hemeras tautes. Verse 30. Prophetes un uparkon kai edos hoti orko homos omosen auto hotheos ek karpu tes asfuos autu kathisai epiton thronon autu. Okay. And now for the translation. Men, brothers, being permitted to say, or being lawful to say, being permitted I think works better, being permitted to say with boldness to you concerning the patriarch David that both he died and he was buried and the tomb of him is among us until the day this. Um, N can mean a lot of things. It doesn't just mean in. I think in this case I would call it a locative of a place and say among among us or a date of a place until this day there's a demonstrative pronoun okay verse 30 a prophet therefore being and having known that with an oath swore to him God that from the fruit of the loin of him to sit upon his throne um, you've heard of fruit of the loom this is fruit of the loin okay How'd you do? And now for the interlinea. Men, brothers, okay. Being permitted. So this is Exxon, a gas company, uh, but in ancient Greece, it was a participle. Um, this is a strange little word. In fact, it's dictionary form, as you'll see on the next page, uh, we're gonna list as existi, which is third person singular. Kind of means it is lawful. Um, although in its participle form here, being lawful. Uh, being allowed. Uh, and it's a word that expects an infinitive to complete its meaning. Being permitted what? Being permitted to say. Okay, with boldness to you, a couple of prepositional phrases there, concerning the patriarch David. That kai kai in this situation means both and. Both he died and he was buried. And I'll parse those puppies. Well, actually, I don't think I parsed this one on the next page. So let me go ahead and parse uh, etelutesen, uh, here. A new with an epsilon in front of it is almost always a movable new. Woo! Throw it away. Epsilon is a third person singular, past tense, active indicative ending. Um, and so sigma tells me it's aorist, uh, active indicative, uh, third person singular. There's the augment. He died uh, and was buried. We'll parse that one on the next uh, page. And the tomb of him is among us until the day this. Okay, questions? Oh, you can't ask me. Actually, you can. I do kind of monitor my YouTube posts. Okay, uh, and you can also do, do it on Patreon. Uh, that is my base camp for this. Uh, therefore, prophet being. This is a procrastinator, never comes to where it's supposed to. Uh, we're going to translate it first. Therefore, prophet being, participle, present active participle, nom de masculine and singular from Huparco. Uh, being a prophet and having known, this is a weird one, really weird, but it's on the next page. It's, it's related to seeing because of the id. Um, you don't want to overdo it. This is a little bit of overload fallacy. But oida, oida is a word that means to know, but its root is that id of seeing it. So it has more of a sense of experiential knowledge. You know it because you've seen it, and it stayed with you. Don't want to overdo it, but that's it'll preach. Um, that, with an oath... Uh, he swore to him, God swore to him, this is the subject, even though it comes later, God swore to him uh, from the fruit of the loin of him to sit, um, someone to sit. Uh, this is a infinitive. I think I have it on the next page, so I'll wait till then. Uh, upon his throne. It's too late for me to be doing this. Yeah. Okay. So, questions? Oh. Parsing. 
Um, so Exxon is from Existy. This is just weird, but it, this is a me. I don't know that it ever appears as X a me, um, but uh, it means to be lawful or to be permitted in this case. It's this on, uh, the, if in the part in the nominative part of song, participle song, lu on u sa on. This is the neuter nominative singular, neuter nominative singular, uh, participle ending, participle. Uh, present active, because it's got the letters of the present. Being lawful is the way I translate a, a verb like this. Okay, a pain. Six out of seven infinitive forms end in I. The other one is ain. So I know it's an active infinitive. And then ape, it's aping an aorist. I've memorized that this aorist just because I have. And it's from Lego. Okay, a toughie. This is, this is a toughie. A toughie is a toughie. Um, because look, it's topto. What? What in the world is going on here? Well, um, the when you have these kinds of baptizo or something like that, a lot of times the, the tau, which is a dental, uh, like my teeth, it falls out. Delta, tau, thetas ten, are dentals. They tend to fall out. Um, and so when we talk about endings, it's the P uh, that we're dealing with here. Now, normally, this is aorist passive. Normally, it would have a theta, eta. But whatever reason, this, this is a second aorist passive, which means it doesn't want to do the theta. Uh, and so we've lost the theta, and the, and the P has gone breathy. Um, so it should have been the, and instead it's fe, which I guess is easier to say. So it is, I know it's aorist passive with a missing theta, uh, indicative third singular. Now, what happened to the theta here at the beginning? Well, it, it, it didn't want two breathy consonants. Uh, then it would be ethafe, um, or maybe originally etafe. Anyway, it didn't want to do that, and so it downgraded the theta, which is a breathy dental, to t, which is an unvoiced delta. Etafe is easier to say than, uh, so what it should have been theoretically was ethafe, which is harder to say. Anyway, okay, ados, another weird one. Um, we think of this as being perfect, perfect in form, but present in meaning, having known. Anyway, uh, that's just what we do with this word. This is oida, which is perfect in form and present in meaning. So this is the participle, perfect in form and present in meaning. I, the os is a hint that it's perfect, because if you do the nominative participle song, lu on usa, on amen as amen amen on. And now we get to the perfects. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the, then the air is passive. So, they, they, so, then. Now, now to the perfects. Le, lu, kos, quia, kos. There's the os of the perfect active participle. Anyway, not that that helps. Uh, but it's it means something like um, knowing. Okay. And then last, we have two more. Uh, this is a weird one because look, omnuo is the word, and it's omosen, uh, omosen in the aorist. Who knew? Again, it's just, it's irregular. Sorry. Um, so, but that omega is a augmented omicron. It's aorist. Sigma epsilon. I would have guessed that that's aorist because a new with an epsilon is a movable new most of the time. Do throw it away. Epsilon is a very common third person singular past tense ending, and with a sigma, it's aorist active indicative third singular. So that sen, the sen on the end told me aorist active indicative third singular, all of that. And then once you know the word, you have just memorized that it has an irregular form. Lastly, kathisai. I've already told you this is an aorist, uh, an, an infinitive, because six out of seven infinitives end in i, infinitive. The other one is ain. Um, and then sigma alpha tells me it's aorist, so it's an aorist active infinitive from kathidzo. Okay, we made it. We made it through it. And so two more days and we'll be done with another week of Acts chapter dos.